Hello, I'm Shlomo Meital. Welcome to our course, Cracking the Creativity Code, How to Discover and Deliver Ideas. Part 1, Discovering Ideas. I'm a professor at uh, Technion, Israel Institute of Technology, and a senior research fellow at the S. Neiman Institute, which is on the campus. Uh, it's a think tank. Uh, this course was developed by myself and my colleague and co-author, Arya Rutenberg, I'll tell you more about him a little later. Um, I've spent my career uh, in academic life. Arya has applied creativity with great success, uh, and that's why I recruited him to help uh, write our book on creativity. I'd like to give you a brief overview of our course before we plunge into the material. So we believe strongly that creativity is an acquired skill. It's, it's a muscle. And like any muscle, it gets better as you exercise it, as you practice your creativity. The more you practice discovering ideas and implementing them, the better you will get at it. We also believe that creativity changes the world and enriches people's lives. You know, the world is kind of a messy place right now. And uh, we're facing a kind of shortage of resources to deal with all the many problems that we face, global warming, economic problems, inequality, health, uh, illness, uh, uh, lack of literacy, and so on. So uh, we, we desperately need as much creativity as we can get. Now, creativity implies actually doing something. It's not just about having ideas. So there are two parts to creativity. The first is discovery, discovering new ideas, new products, new services, new everything new and better ways to do everything. Creativity everywhere, all the time, in every part of our life. The second part of creativity is delivery, implementing our new ideas using proven tools and methods of business and management. So part one, our four weeks together, is about discovering ideas, how to do that. Part two, we hope you'll take that course as well, another four-week course, that's about how we implement the ideas that we have, and all of this in order to change the world. <clears throat> My colleague Arya Ruthenberg and I are very passionate about strengthening your, your creativity. Uh, we feel that you individually, each of you, and together, we all can change the world. We can make the world a better place by simply strengthening our creativity and practicing, practicing it. Uh, somebody once said, um, the things we do for ourselves, those things, they kind of die when we leave this world. But things we do for others, using our creativity, those things last forever. So enhanced creativity everywhere, everyone, everywhere, all the time. It's our best solution for making the world a better place. Let me provide an overview of the two four-week courses. This is part one. So in part one, we'll offer you a structured method for generating and implementing world-changing ideas. We call this method zoom in, zoom out, and zoom in. And it makes creativity accessible to everyone. Uh, we work with companies and organizations. Our message to them is uh, it's not just the boss who has the great ideas. Some of the ideas come from the person running the warehouse. Creativity on the part of everyone to tackle challenging real world needs. In part two, um, delivering ideas, we teach you how to test your ideas so that you avoid implementing ideas that really aren't so strong. Uh, how to scale an idea up um, to a, perhaps a global business. How to create a learning organization um, how to identify real needs so that you don't waste your time inventing things that nobody wants or needs. How do you start a business without money? Uh, how to start a social enterprise which is not aimed at making profit but simply wants to help a lot of people but still has to be properly run. How can you be an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur creatively creating ideas inside a big organization? How do you write a business plan? So all of that will be uh, discussed in, in part two. So back to part one, this four-week uh, course. Uh, this is about discovery. We want to give you proven tools and frameworks that will help you personally 
generate an endless stream of creative ideas. And we think that during our four weeks together, uh, you will become measurably better at the creative process, and we have ways of testing that. Our goal is uh, to empower you. I, I teach creativity and innovation um, in, in many places, and I've taught this for over 40 years. And I've encountered many managers, many students of management, MBA students. They believe they've lost it. Their creativity has become rusty. And the reason is they work for employers, big companies usually, and the big companies want them to do their job and do it well and do the same thing today that they did yesterday and do it again tomorrow. That's called discipline or efficiency or productivity. Um, and they pay lip service, these organizations, to creativity. But the truth is what they really want is for you to just do your job and get on with it. And so many people I teach feel they've lost their creative powers, uh, but they haven't. They haven't. They've just become a little rusty. And by exercising our creative powers, we can restore them and change the world. That's what our course is about, and that's what we're very passionate about. Now, sometimes we believe that creativity is uh, having eureka moments, having these brainstorm ideas. Uh, but the fact is you need a method for generating ideas. And we present you with a method in our course that makes creativity accessible to everyone. And then we ask you to practice this method with your fellow students and then tackle some really, really tough problems that the world is facing now. So we're going to give you seven really hard challenges. And each challenge represents something people, many people, really need but don't have yet. And we'll ask you to find creative ways to satisfy that need. And then at the end of the course, your final project will be to present your ideas in a two-minute video and share it with other students. And your fellow students will evaluate uh, the quality of your ideas, your solutions, to one of these seven challenges. The second four-week course uh, will guide you through a series of methods that help you take your idea and then make it happen, deliver it, uh, implement it, create products, bring it to the world, and help a lot of people enrich their lives by using your ideas. Uh, you can take either just part one or just part two, or you can take them both uh, depending on your interests and needs. These uh, courses are, are self self-standing. So how creative do you think you really are? And what part of creativity do you really do best? Is it discovery? Do you generate huge numbers of ideas? Or is it delivery? Are you really good at implementing and at managing? Uh, the creative journey begins with a look deep inside each of us, deep inside yourself. Uh, what are you passionate about? What are you good at? What do you really, really uh, love to do? I like to quote um, an educator named Kenneth, Kenneth Robinson. I'm going to quote him at length uh, later, who, who likes to say that um, creativity is finding what you love to do when you're playing and then use that to become your work and to make, to make your living. Uh, so that's a, that's a crucial part of creativity, is doing things that, that you love. Um, so what are we talking about here? What is discovery? Discovery is generating novel and useful ideas that satisfy unmet needs. That last part is very important. Um, true creativity, discovery of ideas, often, usually, should begin with finding something where someone has a problem, someone is a challenge, or a large number of people. And we use our creativity to help meet that, that desperate need. Um, delivery is taking our idea, how we can solve this, how we can solve global warming, poverty, illness, how we can tackle these things. Taking our creative idea and then finding a way to make it happen. In India, I'll present a case study later about <clears throat> a group of people who wanted to bring 
uh, medical care, health care, to people in poor Indian villages um, who didn't have access to health care. Um, that was the need they identified, and they, find a un they found a unique way to, s to resolve it. And uh, the way that to they resolved it was by using the rail system. Um, so we will, we will talk about that a little more uh, later. Uh, before we go on, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Matroska. Matroska travels with me when I teach creativity and innovation. And Matroska helps me teach a very important point about discovery and delivery. Um, Matroska doesn't speak, but she's actually very eloquent. So the Matroska dolls, here is one doll and the second Matroska doll and a third. <clears throat> this will take a moment here. And a fourth. This is the fourth Matroska doll. And we have a fifth Matroska doll. Notice how beautifully these are hand painted. This is a especially beautiful one. And the sixth Matroska doll. And they're all getting smaller and smaller. And the seventh Matroska doll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the eighth Matroska doll. I'll hold it up for you to see. And finally, the one that's hard to see, the ninth. These are the nine Matroska dolls. And what Matroska teaches us is that this is the idea, the small idea. And then around that idea, we have to build financing, money, human resources, marketing, distribution, channels, production, quality assurance, all of those things that make an idea into a full-blown product. And there's one more thing that Matroska will teach us before we end this brief introduction. On the table in front of me, there are nine Matroska dolls. Nine Matroska dolls. For years, I taught that Matroska was nine nested dolls until a curious student came up and said, uh, Professor, <clears throat> why nine? Why nine? Why not ten? And I said, I don't know. Nobody ever asked that before. And I've been teaching this for years, and Matroska has been traveling with me for years and years. And so we took the ninth little Matroska doll, and lo and behold, there is a tenth Matroska doll, and here she is. And you can barely see her in my fingers as I hold her up. Can you see that? The tenth Matroska doll. And there's a lesson here, the lesson of curiosity and asking questions. Why? And really, really seeing things, which is a crucial part of creativity. Part one, discovering ideas. What are our objectives? Before you start any project, you always ask, how will we know at the end of it if we've succeeded? Here are the six objectives that we have, I think, for our course together. Understand our method, the zoom in, zoom out, zoom in method for developing ideas. Learn some exercises that we can do to strengthen our creativity. Practice these, this method. Study cases of people and ideas that have changed the world with creativity. Learn about some research about creativity. Is creativity related to intelligence? Uh, is it determined by our genes? What? Practice applying uh, ZZOZ to pressing social needs. And above all, take the energy of your creativity and your passion and apply it to every facet of your life and your work, starting now. Put your creativity to work to change your lives, starting now. We have some reading. This is optional reading. Um, I hope you will, if you like, read our book, Cracking the Creativity Code, by my friend, colleague, co-author, and former student, Arya Rudenberg. Uh, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. Framework for more creativity, fun, and success. I'd just like to mention one of the words in the subtitle, the fun word. In business school, we don't use that word very much. We talk about profit. But life is meant to be enjoyed. And one of the main reasons to 
re-energize your creativity is simply because it's more fun to do new things than to do the same old things all the time. I can also recommend another textbook that I've written together with a colleague in India, Professor Sashadri, on innovation management. And this is a, a large, thick textbook that has more tools about how to implement ideas, but that will uh, be mostly relevant for part two, delivering ideas. So um, a word about uh, the instructors, myself, Shlomo Metal. I've been teaching innovation for over 45 years, born in Canada, spent my career uh, in Israel, taught for many summers at MIT, and um, finally have gotten around to doing a startup together with my former student and friend, Arye Rutenberg. Arye started Israel's largest advertising agency. As you know, advertising agencies are built on creativity. When I started to write my book on creativity, I hunted up, hunted up uh, Arye, and together we wrote the book. I, I was very uh, passionate about having someone who had actually implemented uh, creativity and used it to change the world. And I'll be on camera in front of you, but Arye together with me has, has built this, this course. Uh, we're going to challenge you to, to meet seven unmet needs that we've identified in the world. <clears throat> Um, we're going to ask you to choose one of these and to tackle them using the tools we teach. Create a new kind of restaurant. Or uh, find a way to bring the internet to more than half the world who currently lack it. Um, find a way to save lives because in many parts of the world, developing world, um, people use cooking fires indoors and they inhale the smoke and that causes them uh, respiratory illnesses. Um, 1.3 billion people in the world have no access to electricity. Half the world children go to schools that have no electricity. Imagine that. Can you find a way to bring electricity to the part of the world that doesn't have it? Um, this is a, a seemingly small but really painful problem. People forget babies and small children in locked cars and uh, they die of overheating, hypothermia, and asphyxiation. Uh, can you find a, a way, a clever way, to prevent this from happening in, in cars? Um, beverages, can you develop a new, healthy, tasty, popular beverage, but not in these plastic bottles that create environmental problems in an eco-friendly package? We use 60 million plastic water bottles in America alone in, in a year. How can we prevent that? And the last challenge, and this has a choice. Can you find a way to foster creativity in elementary and secondary schools while improving basic skills in knowledge and, and math, reading, and science? So we need to know the basic things that other people have discovered, but we also need to stimulate children to develop their own knowledge, their own approaches, their own ideas. And schools um, are really, really bad at that right now. Or um, an alternate part of the seventh challenge, can you find a practical way to recycle food to feed the hungry? Uh, one estimate says that we waste a third to a half of the food that we produce in the world through wastage, rotting, um, discarding um, mice, uh, animals, and, and so on. Um, can you find a way to get some of this unused food to the hungry people who really, really need it and want it. So to end uh, our, our uh, brief introduction, creativity is not just in our genes. It's an acquired skill and it improves with practice. And you can reignite your creative powers by practicing using them. We're going to teach you a method for doing that um, in our coming uh, four weeks together in this course. So please join us. Um, and a quick overview of week one, we're going to talk about the definition of creativity, widening the range of choices, um, a quick overview, a quick glimpse at the Zizo Z method. We're going to give you a self-test for your creativity on our website. We're going to test your discovery and delivery skills, talk about the imagination elevator, um, the Zizo Z framework, framework in action, 
uh, defining it, bringing you stories about it, and some creativity exercises, and then a preview of next week's session. So that ends our uh, session, our introductory session, and we'll move on now to week one, which is about what is creativity? How do we define it?